start the service by singing a song called Christ is Enough.
everything I need. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our time of worship. It is so good to be together this morning, though not in our usual way. I'd like to thank Natasha first up. She's been quite helpful and sometimes her brother with music and some others. It is great to have Natasha in-house this morning and music is live as well. Also, we have uh, Tracy is with us too and we will uh, begin our worship just after a few announcements. This morning, our worship is going to be different. It's our annual memorial service, our flower service. We're not together as always. Usually we have a great number of people who come together to pay respect and to pray for the souls of those who are gone before us, our loved ones. And we're also inside this morning and uh, all this equipment does not work that well outside. If you'd like to stay after our live worship is over, we're going to finish with a uh, uh, walk around, a video walk around of our cemetery. And so if you'd like to hang on after our last song, last hymn for worship this morning, you'll be able to uh, see our cemetery. I'd like to thank all who support ministry here at Holy Innocence, uh, especially this morning, those who support the upkeep of our cemetery. During our annual worship every year, we take in a considerable amount of gifts from people, and that goes towards supporting ministry and the upkeep of our cemetery. You may support ministry here or the upkeep of our cemetery in several ways. You may drop off a donation at our church office, mail, or using e-transfer, H-I-A-C, give, at hotmail.com. And you'll see information about that in the chat room. And also, if you want to scroll down Facebook, you'll see more info. I'd like to recognize also this morning our ongoing work with a wall mural, our garden mural. Mr. Beck, an art teacher has uh, uh, volunteers time to uh, do that particular work. If you scroll down a little there on Facebook, uh, you will see the progress of that. There's some colors being added. You can also participate in doing that. So uh, Mr. Beck's uh, uh, Facebook page is there if you want to message him. Uh, you can arrange, of course, safely to come by with social distancing and have an opportunity to be a part of uh, adding to the color and the image that's going to be uh, on our concrete wall, which is a very nasty, ugly looking spot. And now with the garden and now with the mural is gonna be one of our prettiest spot. It's a lesson just in that alone. The theme is peace be with you and also with you, the theme of our mural. For the next five Sundays, it's going to be away on some holiday time. Uh, but Tracy is going to uh, look after uh, responsibility to the worship team of worship uh, for uh, the next uh, several Sundays, and uh, she'll also be looking after responsibility of looking after pastoral care. And so if there is a need for pastoral care, uh, contact Tracy and you'll be able to get some assistance there, or some direction. Our two wardens, Annette and Colin, of course, are also responsible for looking after uh, many things that happen in our parish. And you can find their contact info on our website and also if you were to call our parish uh, office number, uh, you will get uh, their contact info on there. So next week, uh, we won't be in our building live. Uh, we will be somewhere else. So Tracy, I don't know if you want to fill people in on that sure. one. Uh, so next week, I'll be away myself. Uh, I'm going to be in Bonavista in Catalina. 
So I've decided to team up with my friend and colleague, Reverend Eli Cross, who's uh, new to the parish of Catalina, and we'll be doing a service live from one of his uh, parishes. So it'll be 10.30 um, on Facebook Live, so you just tune into your, your Facebook Live, and uh, you'll see me next Sunday live on location. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for looking after things while I'm gone, along with vestry and wardens. Certainly leave everything in, uh, in great hands. And so now we begin our worship. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. And also with you. My friends, we gather today to pray for our brothers and sisters whose bodies lie here in rest. They have passed from death to life in the company of the Lord Jesus, who died and rose to new life and are purified now from their faults. We pray that God may welcome them among all the saints of heaven. Father in heaven, we thank you because you made us in your own image and gave us gifts in body, mind, and spirit. We thank you now for your servants who are buried here and what they meant to each of us. As we honor their memory, make us more aware that you are the one from whom every perfect gift comes, including the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall burst into song. The ransom of the Lord shall return, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. The ransom of the Lord shall return, and the sorrow and sign shall flee away. Strengthen the weary hands, and make firm the feeble knees. The ransom of the Lord shall return, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. The ransom of the Lord shall return, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of which food fill with marrow, well-aged vines strain clear. And he will destroy on the mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up debt forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from their faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We will wait for him, who that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 116, and our response is, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal, for he turned his ear to me in the day when I called him. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. They surrounded me, the snares of death, with the anguish of the tomb, they caught me, sorrow and distress. I called on the Lord's name. O Lord, my God, deliver me. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. How gracious is the Lord and just. Our God has compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearts. I was helpless, so he saved me. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. He has kept my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me will never die forever. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world, the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God, we give you thanks for your blessings, for we have read your word in our presence. And though we may be near or far, we know that word now will find a home within our heart. Help us to open that word, that it may speak to us, that we may speak to your world. In your son's name we pray, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Then Jesus said to them very plainly, Lazarus is dead. For most of us, that is the last word. There is nothing else to say. We silently turn, hugging our family or friends who are with us. We cry. And we walk out the door. The worst has happened. The grimmest of all grim tragedies has been enacted. In this case, Lazarus is dead. There had not been a happier home in the little village of Bethany than this one. They had everything a family could possibly need. They had a comfortable home, plenty of good food, And more than that, they had a home whose doors were open to many families and many people and friends. And there were love there. They loved each other. And they had a love for Jesus. And that is the sure foundation of any home. But Lazarus, he is dead. The head of the household, the protector, The business manager, the beloved brother, could no longer join in their laughter or sheer in their tears. The home which was once amongst the happiest is now filled with gloom, darkness, and despair. The light had gone out of their lives. The sun had set. Home can never be the same anymore. Their home had always been the place where people would go and sing and dance and celebrate. They made others feel loved, and they rejoiced with others in the village. Open-handed hospitality is what one could expect from them. Their home was also the preacher's home. No word seen on earth was Jesus more at home than when he was with his friends Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. He was a brother to listen, a sister to sit at his feet, and another sister who was one of the best cooks around. What a wonderful place to go. Jesus went there often, it seemed, with his disciples in his travels. He would stop. It would be hours or a few days. But everything, everything now has changed because Lazarus is dead. What took Lazarus' life? We don't know. How intense was his suffering? How long did he linger? Be assured from the first day of his sickness, his two sisters and maybe others nursed him with the most tender care. During his illness, many times the sisters would 
say to one another, if only Jesus would come. Why was this tragedy allowed to take place? Why must Lazarus suffer? Why must death lay hold of him now? Questions that were probably asked. But Lazarus grew sicker and he died. By the time Jesus arrived, he had been dead for several days. In the gospel, we find that Jesus did not try to explain or give an answer to Martha's question of why, why he had not been there earlier. He simply asked her to believe. Then with love in his heart and tears in his own eyes, he went to the graveside of Lazarus and he ordered that the stone be removed from the tomb, the grave may be open. Arguments broke out. This can't be. Death is final. It is over. All hope is gone. But Jesus persisted, and the grave was open. After a prayer towards heaven, Jesus spoke, Lazarus, come out. And he did. Jesus gave new life to Lazarus a new hope to all the people. In life, things often start off wonderful. We are born, and things are innocent and great, and we spend life with one another. But along the way, things can happen. Difficulties can arise that often make life hard and sad. Things don't always turn out the way we hoped them to. Dreams don't always come true. Sickness and heartbreak sometimes comes our way, especially to those whom we love. Decisions we make sometimes can make life difficult, make life hard. In the end, the death of a loved one can alter our lives and cause us to be very, very sad, heartbroken. Today, you may remember your first loss of a loved one by death, family member or friend, and how it made you feel. Maybe by age, sickness, or sudden death by accident. Of course, there is no preparing, no getting ready, no matter how much you are told something is coming. When the news comes, when it happens, it is hard, so very hard. But we do know, even in the darkness of death, we are never alone. For in fate, people reach out to us in his name. And Jesus comes to us to spend time with us, to walk with us during the day and quiet hours of the night, to be in our heart, to give us reassurance that this is not the end, that death doesn't close the eyes of our spirit, but that our spirit lives on in faith, and that one day we will be reunited together again around that great heavenly table and that place that sometimes we call paradise, the life beyond heaven. In that, let us take our comfort and let us walk with him on the journey of the way, and all will be well. Dear God, we give you thanks for your many blessings to us. For you come to us at all times to be with us, to give us peace, to give us hope. Be with us now and always. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and a life life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for those dead who were so dear to us, from whom such goodness flows. We pray that they all are held sacred and everything in which they were wonderful will continue to mean so much to us and go living in our hearts and lives. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us reach out and pray for all who mourn the death of a child or a parent, a brother or a sister, a friend or relative. Let us pray for all who have suffered an unspeakable loss and for those who go on blindly, unable to overcome their sorrow. Let us pray for all who are discouraged, that they may not hate the light of life, but that they may keep an open heart. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who die and are not mourned, but ignored in death like a stone by the roadside. Let us pray for all who are lost in war and prison, for those who have taken their own life and for those who are lonely in life and in death that God may hear them and keep them in his heart. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember now those who have died and were buried at Holy Innocence Church since our flower service last year. Carol Ann Squires, Barbara Nellie Janes, Pearl Alice Livingstone, Maxwell Barrett, Reverend Munden Way, and Frank Sharp. In all our prayers, we give thanks to Jesus Christ, our brother who died our death so that we might live his life. We ask this prayer in his name, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. We now continue as Natasha will lead us in another hymn. Hi everyone, I'm going to be singing Just As I Am. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that Oh 
Neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust in you, not for ourselves alone, but also for those whom we love and who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe in your power to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so may we trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have another selection from Natasha. The last song I'm going to be doing is called Amazing Grace. can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Certainly good we could come together again this morning. Thank you all who have made this service possible and all who helped to support the ministry here at Holy Innocence Church in Paradise. If you'd like to hold on and give me a moment, we're going to have a, a brief video walk around of our cemetery. And for those who cannot be here today, and some people I know are far Hopefully you'll gain some comfort in our walk around and, and may be able to see uh, the great side of your loved ones as we pay respect and give God thanks for their souls. Give me just a moment, please. Everyone, the next hymn we're going to be doing is called Because He Lives. <laughs> 